Guess what? It's trivia time. Here is your fifth question for the We're Still Here in Concert event coming up on April 14th. As a reminder, you only need to answer one question correctly to be entered into the drawing. What hiking trail location will host the 2024 Audio Checker hike on July 27th? Is it A, Royal Arch, B, Maroon Bells, C, Long's Peak, or D, Myers Gulch? If you think you have the right answer, email us at feedback at aftersight.org or call us at 720-712-8856 for your chance to enter and win two tickets to this amazing show. Good luck and thanks for playing. Thank you for joining us for the March 21st, 2024 Thursday reading of the Montrose and Delta News. As seen in the March 18th, 2024 edition of the Montrose Mirror. My name is Esther Frank. Today we will be reading the following main articles, which were all written as specials from the Montrose Mirror. As follows. Montrose and Olathe high school seniors get a bite of reality, followed by Foster Connections serving our future today, And then Mark Catlin's adult education bill becomes law with high approval. Then news articles regarding the Bureau of Land Management and ending with the local events calendar. Regional news briefs. Montrose and Olathe High School seniors get a bite of reality. Special to the mirror. Montrose. New Vista Federal Credit Union and Black Canyon Rotary Club hosted the annual financial reality fair for the seniors of Montrose High School, Olathe High School, Vista High School, Black Canyon High School and Vista Charter School on Thursday, March 7th, 2024, while underclassmen were PSAT and SAT testing. During the event, powered by the Bite of Reality platform, more than 300 students gathered in the Macmillan Gymnasium to learn about what goes into a monthly budget as an adult. Kimberly Icota, a senior at Montrose High School, said, I learned about the reality of spending money wisely and how it can determine the way you live your life. I know now that you have to make sacrifices in order to pay the bills for housing, cars, utilities, and food. Each student was given a hypothetical life circumstance, a job, a monthly salary, spouse and child, credit score and student loans. They then had to navigate through different stations to make purchases for their monthly budget. It was interesting having all these real life professionals explain and teach us how to manage our money. It showed me that in reality, situations occur that you don't expect and you have to be prepared for them. Now I want to learn more about how to manage my money explained Charlie Tieda, Montrose High School senior. The different stations included housing and utilities, transportation, childcare, entertainment, household needs, clothing and personal care, groceries and dining and shopping. The Montrose Workforce Center was proud to participate in the financial reality fair. Our staff were impressed by the students that we interacted with and the direction many are taking in life. We were excited to hear that many seem to be making good financial decisions at our table as much as we tried to upsell them. A number of kids were interested in learning how the local workforce centre can help them in real life as well. We look forward to following up and helping them navigate their career choices, said Montrose Workforce Centre Assistant Director Amanda Waltrip. In each station, students were guided by real local adult volunteers who helped the students make difficult but appropriate choices among a variety of options to determine what would fit in their hypothetical monthly budget. My favourite part of the event was being able to experience a real-life scenario and managing my money in that sense. I think we're aware that budgeting is a thing, but most of us haven't really had to experience it yet. So just learning how to be smart about that and the reality behind it was very helpful said Olathe High School senior Jenna Schneck. The students watched as each choice 
nice clothes, a brand new car payment, a home, childcare, etc., slowly dwindled their monthly income. It is always so much fun volunteering at the Financial Reality Fair and helping high school seniors in our community learn some real world lessons about finances. It's great being able to challenge them to really think about the impact of their financial decisions, said Jane Marine Armandson, Director of Community Outreach for Alpine Bank. After being tested to consider real world decisions, students shared their experiences in a group Q&A session where the students were able to win some fun prizes. The students also had the opportunity to ask New Vista's CEO, BJ Corum, questions about the credit union, budgeting and credit scores. Our New Vista team always enjoys the interactions with the students and community leaders. We are proud to be a title sponsor for the annual Financial Reality Fair and to see this event continue to grow each year. Financial literacy continues to be important to us. That is why we are excited to be able to add the new post-event learning opportunity for the students with Money EDU, said New Vista CEO BJ Corum. Students learned about money and then had the chance to win some money. 20 lucky students won $100 in the form of a Montrose Bucks gift card. Students also had the chance to apply for one of six $1,000 scholarships. To apply for the $1,000 award, senior fair participants complete a scholarship application and submit an essay explaining what they learned from the financial reality fair. The submission deadline is April 5th. The generous support of our event sponsors continue to make the scholarships possible. The following businesses also sponsored stations and prizes at the event. The sponsors are Alpine Bank, DMEA slash Elevate, City of Montrose and Police Department, Montrose County, Horn Family Foundation, Camp Robber, Jimmy John's, Eldorado Financial, Flower Motor, Maxfield Peterson CPA, Timberline Bank, Turner Toyota, Backstreet Bagels, Dolby Wendland & Co., Dever and Plumhoff LLC, Montrose Recreation District, Montrose Workforce Center, Pia Kindness, Pepsi, and Real Estate Store. Thank you to all those who made financial donations, making it possible to run the event and give our scholarships. Also, thank you to the many volunteers giving up their time to guide students through these life choices of budgeting, saving, and understanding credit scores. Thank you to the Montrose Olathe community for your continued support. Community News Briefs. Foster Connections, serving our future today. Montrose. The Stonehouse Restaurant recently hosted a benefit wine dinner supporting Foster Connections, a non-profit support service and a valuable part of our community. Foster Connections provides much needed support to foster care homes and their children in need. Have you heard of Foster Connections? This local benefit supports children placed in kinship or foster care homes with three key goals. To provide initial support during placement, to bring people together, allowing a space for connection to develop lasting and supportive relationships, and to provide ongoing support. What does that look like? Shane and Joanna Daly have four children, ages 18, seven, and two three-year-olds. Three were adopted through foster care and one is biological. Here's what Foster Connection support has meant to them in their own words. Imagine a two-year-old boy being dropped off at your home at 6 p.m. with nothing but the PJ's diaper and the slippers he's wearing, with a good luck from the social worker. Being a foster family is totally worth it, but it can also be really hard. Foster Connections fills a huge need in the foster care world. We are so thankful that Stonehouse highlighted this organization to our Montrose community. Rebecca Lansdowne, director of Foster Connections and its founder, reflected on the evening and summed up her gratitude by sharing, 
I am so thankful for each person that attended this wine dinner and took the time to learn more about Foster Connections. We truly believe that if we can service at-risk children well today, we will ultimately be serving our future community. So much appreciation goes to the Stonehouse and the fabulous food. 70 attendees learned more about Foster Connections and provided invaluable support to this important organisation, whilst enjoying a delicious dinner and wonderful evening with friends within our community. There are many ways to learn more and help. Find out about how you can help be a part of the solution for the future at www.fosterconnections.org. That's www.fosterconnections.org. N-E-C-T-I-O-N-S dot O-R-G. Colorado News Briefs. Mark Catlin's adult education bill becomes law with high approval. Special to the mirror. Denver. We all want to obtain the good life. For some of us, that means having the opportunity to obtain the skills that we feel we need to better our lives, says Representative Mark Catlin, who was a prime sponsor of SB 24-051, Adult Education. The bill became law on March 6, 2024. This law allows the State Board of Community Colleges and Occupational Education to implement minimum graduation requirements for students to receive a high school diploma. A community college can award a student with a high school diploma who successfully completes these requirements. Also, this bill funds the Adult Education and Literacy Grant Program through the 2028 to 2029 fiscal year. The bipartisan bill received 95% approval from all state legislators. Representative Catlin says, in rural communities especially, opportunity is the spark that keeps our way of life going. Access to education should not be what holds you back from bettering your life or bettering your family's life. This bill delivers more opportunity to individuals to obtain that good life. The prime sponsors in the Colorado House of Representatives were Mark Catlin of Montrose County and Kathy Kipp of Larimer County. The prime sponsor in the Colorado Senate were Rachel Zenzinger of Jefferson County and Barbara Kirkmayer of Weld County. Colorado State Representative Mark Catlin represents the eight counties of Dolores, Delta, Gunnison, Hinsdale, Montezuma, Montrose, Ore, and San Miguel. Representative Catlin Vice Chairs Agriculture, Water and Natural Resources Committee, is a member of the Capital Development Committee and is ranking member of the Transportation, Housing and Local Government Committee. United States News Briefs. The Bureau of Land Management issues public land order to support McPhee Dam and Reservoir. A special to the mirror, Liquid. A public land order publishing in the Federal Register withdraws 953 acres of public land from settlement, sale, location and entry under the general land laws, including the mining laws. It also withdraws 309 acres of national forest system from location and entry under the mining laws. The withdrawal reserves the lands for use by the Bureau of Reclamation in connection with the McPhee Dam and Reservoir Dolores project for 100 years. The Dolores project stores and regulates flow of the Dolores River for irrigation and municipal use through operation of the McPhee Reservoir. The project also provides hydroelectric power generation, salinity control, flood control, recreation opportunities, and fish and wildlife habitat enhancements. The McPhee Dam and Reservoir was constructed in 1984 as part of the Dolores Project and is operated by the Bureau of Reclamation. Regional News Briefs The Bureau of Land Management proposes to transfer uranium mill site to Department of Energy. Special to the Mirror. Lakewood. 
The Bureau of Land Management is taking public input on an application to permanently transfer approximately 70 acres of the Bureau's managed land to the Department of Energy. The application relates to the Dorito Uranium Mill Tailings Radiation Control Disposal Site, which contains four buried uranium mill tailings disposal structures and associated drainage features. The transfer would allow the Department of Energy to safely administer and monitor the site, which is no longer operating. The Bureau of Land Management has published a Federal Register Notice of Withdrawal application kicking off a 30-day opportunity to comment on the requested withdrawal and transfer of jurisdiction. Comments can be sent electronically to jjardine at blm.gov jjardine at blm.gov or delivered to the BLM Colorado State Office P.O. Box 151029 Lakewood, Colorado 80215 Comments must be received by April 13th, 2024 For more information, please contact Jennifer Jardine BLM Realty Specialist at 970-385 one, two, two, four. Community news briefs. Montrose Centre for Arts introduces Chopped, Montrose style. Special to the mirror. Montrose. Montrose heats up on April 13th at 5pm when Montrose Centre for Arts introduces Chopped, Montrose style. This is a new fundraiser for Montrose Centre for Arts. Chopped Montrose style features Chef Zach Lamb of Arrowhead Lodge, Chef Dallin Richardson of Elk Mountain Resort, and Chef Kirsten Kimbriel of the Lodge at Needle Rock. Each will compete using local produce in an appetizer and an entree. Judges will select the best chef in the valley. In addition, each chef is preparing their signature soup for attendees to taste, vote, and purchase. A people's choice will be awarded based upon these votes. Lano Dubois will present a wine pairing. Silver Basin Brewing will tap their spring pale ale for chopped Montreux style. A silent auction will feature induction cooktops, chopping and charcuterie boards, and an original framed Bob de Julio watercolour painting. For more information and tickets, go to www.chopp E-D-M-O-N-T-R-O-S-E dot C-O-M. That's www.choppedmontrose.com. This is going to be a fun, tasty new event for Montrose. Save the date, local events calendar. The ongoing events are Montrose Farmer's Market, a year-round farmer's market, which is on Saturdays at 9am to 1pm for the summer, and every other Saturday at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. for the winter, except Snap and Double Up Food Bucks. You can call 970-249-0705 for more information. They're at Centennial Plaza, 433 South 1st Street, Montrose, Colorado 81401. You can also visit www.valleyfoodpartnership.org. Montrose Centre for Arts First Friday. A new art exhibit opening with featured artists is from 4.30 to 7pm on the first Friday of every month. 11 South Parker Avenue, Montrose. Free admission. For more information, you can call 970-787-9428 or info at mc 4 A-R-T-S dot com. Montrose Altrusa. First Tuesday of the month program meeting. Second Tuesday of the month committee meeting. Third Tuesday of the month business meeting. Meetings are held at the Field House on the corner of Colorado Avenue and Rio Grande Avenue at noon. Free thinkers. Meet first Sunday of the month for information. Call 970-417-417. 4183. Bosom Buddies Breast Cancer Support Group. Wednesdays noon 1245, 
645 South 5th Street. Montrose Historical Society meets on the first Wednesday of the month at Montrose Events Centre, 1036 North 7th Street. 7 p.m. and you can call 970-249-2085 or visit www.montrosehistory.org. Montrose Area Woodturners, second Saturday, 9 a.m. They're at 1780 Road in Montrose. Chapter of the American Association of Woodturners. Information, I'll head, and you can ring 970-209-0981 or the website is A-H-E-A-D-A-V-I-A-T-I-O-N at outlook.com. Nurse Family Partnership is a breastfeeding support group on the first and third Thursday of every month. An infant scale will also be available to check your baby's weight. Breastfeeding support group, bring your questions and your family. This is at the Montrose County Event Center, which the address is 1036 North 7th Street, room three. And the time is 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you have any questions, please call 970-252-5015. There's also bingo every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 7 p.m. at the American Legion Post 24 Olathe. Doors open at 5.30. Sunday bingo will start at 1.30 p.m. More info, call Tom at 970-260-260. 8298. The Montrose Genealogy Centre is at 700 East Main Street. It is now open Wednesday and Thursday afternoons from 1 to 4 pm or call for an appointment at 970 240 1755. There's free help and resources for your family history research. The centre is sponsored by the non profit organisation. Falkin Trails Genealogical Society. The monthly events are the following. From February 1st to April 12th, you can visit the AARP Foundation Tax Aid in Montrose. They're at Tuesdays and Thursdays, Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Montrose Pavilion Senior Center. Free income tax preparation for anyone, free of charge, focused on individuals over 50 or low to moderate income. Appointments are required, so call 970-252-4889, Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. More information about the program is available at T-A-X-A-I-D-E dot A-A-R-P-F-O-U-N-D A-T-I-O-N dot O-R-G. On March 22nd to 24th, the 24th annual Eckert Crane Days Festival will be held. All events are free and it's at Fruit Growers Reservoir. The directions from Delta are to drive east on Colorado 92 to Colorado 65, take Colorado 65 north to Eckert and make a right on North Road. Take North Road East until you see the reservoir. Thank you for joining us for the Montrose and Delta News. My name is Esther Frank.